All right, now that we have gotten the photometry data, the light curve, the real light curve, uh, loaded into TopCat, we need to get a template. This is a, uh, a model, could be made from a computer simulation or from real observations, about what some kind of an average uh, supernova looks like. So we're going to see how, um, if we can make it fit uh, the one that went off and we can make predictions. So we need to get the template first. Go to this website, uh, Peter Nugent's Spectral Templates, supernova.lbl.gov, that's Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory, slash, tilde symbol, Nugent. And you can then put Nugent underscore templates.html, or just from his main page, go to SN Templates here. And that's this. All right. So this is... Um, He's got a lot of different data files here. The one you want, this is a type 1a supernova that went off. That's already been identified from the spectrum. Branch normal, this is going to be a fairly typical kind of supernova. We're not, we don't know any reason that it should be like one of these other kinds. And the kind of data you want are photometry. Photometry means magnitude in whatever filter versus, well, versus time in this case, but magnitude in a given filter. All right, so if you click on photometry then, it'll uh, the file will download, but take a look. Look at the very bottom of my screen. See that the file name ends in .gz. That stands for uh, gzip, which is uh, GNU, G-N-U, zip. It's a freeware version of a file compression, and you will need a gzip uh, program to uncompress that. Macintoshes do this automatically because they're Unix-based. Uh, if you're on Windows, you would need to find one, but there are free ones available. So it's something that uncompresses .gz files. All right, once you've got that then, notice what it gives you. It's going to have columns, ultraviolet, blue, visual, red, infrared, and then J, H, and K infrared bands. All right, I'm going to open up that file. SCP stands for Supernova Cosmology Project, which is um, the project this guy was in. This is the one that I downloaded. I downloaded some others too. Supernova 1A LC for light curve, which is brightness versus time, dot that. It's already been uncompressed. I'll open it up in my text editor to show you. The first column is time in days, measured from the peak. The peak, the brightest day, is day zero. So from 20 days before the peak to 70 days after. And each of the other columns is another filter. U, B, V, R, I, J, H, K. All right. So now that you've got that, let's go into TopCat. <coughs> let's load up our template. So we've got photometry data and now we're going to have a template to fit it. This template is not comma-separated values. It's separated by spaces or tabs. Select ASCII. ASCII is it's an acronym, but it re refers to a text file. OK. Now, if you open up the data file, you see that it's got all the columns, which is fine, but it doesn't know the names of the columns. It just has column 1, column 2, and so on. Open up, select this one here, column metadata, which means the titles of the columns. It correctly has them as numbers, so that's already, we're off to a good start. Let's just retitle these. If I move these out of the way there. Okay, and you see there, U-B-V-R-I-H-J-H-K. Yeah, they're not in alphabetical order. Let's make column one. That's the date. You'll need to double click and then click again to select date U band B V R I J H K. And you have to hit enter after the K so it has it all in there. And notice that these are all just fine there. 
One thing, uh, it, it would come up when you plotted it, you would notice real fast, but take a look at this first row. There's a weird little glitch that I noticed here. Row 1. Notice that all the magnitudes are 50th magnitude. By the second day, it's jumped up to about 4th and 5th magnitude. It's a glitch. It's not real. So let's remove that, um, uh, remove that row. It's just going to, we're going to have to keep replotting and so on. Select that row, the bad one with magnitude 50. Let's make a new subset uh, excluding the one that we just selected. New subset name, um, template good. Sound like a caveman. Add and set as the current subset, the part of the data we're actually going to work on. There. Now that bad row is gone. All right. I don't really need to do anything but the V-band here, so I'm unselecting everything else. There. Date and magnitude. Perfect. I'll X that out. Okay. Now, we've already got a scatter plot up, and if you didn't, you could just select that and hit scatter plot. Now, notice what comes up. Date and V, but it's upside down. We want magnitude to be brighter, uh, brighter is smaller, so flip that. Perfect. But we want these both on the same plot. So, we can close either one of them, doesn't matter which. Go to the little manila folder with a plus sign near the bottom. Add a new data set. Click on that. Now, look here. This all disappeared. The main data set, and you can choose which table is the main data set, and then the secondary one is labeled A. Select whichever one you want. That's the template. X-axis is the date. Y-axis is the V-band, and we've already got it set to flip. All right, they're both on there. What a beautiful plot. Where did they go? All right, what's the problem? Look at this. The dates are separated by 2.5 times 10 to the 6th power. 2.5 million days off. You know why? Take a look at our photometry. J.D. Julian date. 2.5, blah, 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 blah. E6. E6 at the end of a number in any computer language or spreadsheet means times 10 to the 6th power, times a million. Julian date's a counting from a long time. Let's subtract today's Julian date. We downloaded it today. Let's just set today to zero. It, it's arbitrary enough. Okay. We need to find what today's Julian date is. If you go to Google, current Julian date. Julian date converter shows up at the U.S. Naval Observatory. Okay. CE really means AD and BCE is BC. It automatically goes to today's date. Compute. There. Copy. That's the number for today's Julian date. Now, I go back to TopCat. I, because the Julian date is such a gosh awfully large number, I want to get, I want to get it down to, you know, single double digits. So for the Photometry data with Julian date. Go to the table column browser. Add a new column, which is just going to be date. Expression. JD, I think capitalization matters, minus that number we just copied and pasted. Well, now we've pasted it. Units uh, day optional. OK. Hit OK. And look, it appears in the window. From 16 and a half days ago up to today. Hold something. Great. All right. I don't, really don't care about using the Julian date anymore. Now I've got magnitude and date and, oh, you know what? Look here. I click on the top of this and I can magically move it over. Now I've got X and Y there. I'll X that out. Go back to our plot. It hasn't changed anything. Well, no wonder, because, click on main data, I'm still plotting versus Julian date. Select date. Now that looks better. 
Okay, they're still shifted way off from each other. Well, the reason is, is that our photometry, I'll click on that and give you the table, look at the magnitude. It's scaled so that on the peak day, the magnitude is pretty close to zero. Uh, in the U-band, it would be exactly zero, I think they scaled it to, or B-band. All right, so we, what we need to do is to shift this. Well, how much do we shift it by? Well, that's what, we, that's what we're here to do. We can do it by I. If it goes up to roughly magnitude zero, we want to shift the template, not the data, the template, until it's all the way down here, which looks like it's at about 10 and a half. So what do I do? All right, I'm, I'm done playing around with the photometry data. I've just gotten rid of the Julian date and made it a usable number. Now, this is, because I happen to remember, the uh, table columns for the template. I'm going to add a new column, and that's going to be uh, vband but shifted, so v underscore shift. Don't put spaces in it. Underscores are better because you uh, want to be able to use it in a formula and the space is thrown off. Well, that's just going to be v plus, let's say, 10.5. Looks about right. Units mag, but that's optional. And hit OK. And there it shows up. Now, if I, let's see, my template is data set A. Look at that template, good. So A, there we are. I'm still plotting versus B. So what if I plot versus V shift? 